So today I'm with Phoenix. Phoenix, how old are you? I'm 25. And where are you from originally? Uh, Toledo, Ohio. How long have you been out here lost in Phoenix? <laughs> Too long. Uh, you mean homeless or living out here? Uh, Both. Yeah, homeless <laughs> and in Phoenix? Um, homeless and in Phoenix. So it's coming up on two years now. So two years ago, like what happened to cause you to come out here? Um, so May 10th, 2022, I actually lost the love of my life. Um, he didn't do blues, but I did, and he kept trying to get me to go to rehab and quit and did anything and everything, but I just wasn't reciprocating and I wasn't ready. So one day he had uh, found my kid on me, like my pills, and he um, he said he threw them out and I didn't even look into it. I didn't give it a second thought because I was so focused on going and getting high that I didn't realize that he had kept them. And the next day um, he wasn't answering his calls. I went over to his house knocked on the door and his parents said, what did you give him? So he had actually taken my pills. That was the first and last time he ever did blues. And I guess the day he did that, um, May 10th, 2022, was the first ever recognized fentanyl awareness day, ironically enough. So first and last time he ever did them. And after that, um, my family lost the house that we were living in in Maricopa City. And, um, I, they had moved to a family friend's house, but I wasn't invited to go with them because I was obviously still on drugs. And um, so after that, I'd gone to a rehab, but I lasted probably about two days, uh, crossroads in Mesa, and then I just left. I just left and I've been out on the streets pretty much ever since. So my condolences for the loss of... Tyler. 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 You even have a tattoo. I do. <laughs> a little memorial. I have a 27 tattooed on my face, too. That's how old he was when he died. 27? Too young. Uh, how old were you when you originally started Blues? Um, I want to say 22. I had started them. Um, a coworker actually, uh, I had been complaining at my job. I was working at the time in Maricopa. I worked in a kitchen at a bar and, um, I'd been complaining about like being in pain because you know like just you know lifting stuff and like you know cutting up vegetables and all that. <laughs> um, and he's like, oh, here, take one of these. It's a perk. You know, it'll help. It'll help the pain. It'll help you. You know, be able to work. And um, I don't know why. Like, because usually if I've ever done anything in the past drug-wise, I always look it up. I do my research. I make sure it is what it is. You know, I didn't look into it. I didn't look it up. I didn't do any of that. I just took it at face value. Like, oh, it's a perk. You know. And look up that hey, you know, that's, that's, that looks a little different, you know. <laughs> that's not what it is. He says it is, you know. And I didn't realize until like, like months later that it was actually fentanyl. And um, at that point, I had already been physically addicted. And um, the first time I ever went through a withdrawal, like I didn't even know that's what it was. Like I just thought I felt crappier than I usually did, like physically. So, but yeah, by the time I'd realized and already. I was in it too deep, so, and at once I got after the initial, like, I guess, nodding off and, like, the initial, you know, like, that part, um, I had just felt like a normal functioning human being for once in my life, like, actually able to do stuff like normal, like, other people could do without, like, complaining or, you know, <laughs> being in pain, so, I think that's what got me hooked to it, was the fact that I just felt normal, so. And do you think it's numbing? Some emotional pain, some trauma for you now? <laughs> Heck no. <laughs> I mean, it may suppress it for a short period of time, but it doesn't make it go away. And I can't tell you how many times I've come off of a cold turkey and everything just comes back tenfold. Like, and it makes everything so much worse too. Like, it causes so much more pain and heartache and it just, the damage that it's done to my life and so many other people's lives is it's not worth it at all. It's not worth reaping the benefits to, you know, sleep out for a fucking old day or, you know, oops, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's not worth it. No matter how long you're not out for, no matter how numb you feel, like, during, like, the usage of it, it's, it's not worth it. How much longer do you think you'll be out here? Not long. Um, I know it's a time coming, you know, 
whether I'm going to end up, you know, obviously I don't want to get locked up, but um, I'm going to try to get into a rehab program. And I was actually, I did get locked up uh, last May, and I did go to a rehab uh, for two months. And I was on the right track, you know, like I'd been sober for 70 something days. And that was probably the longest I've been sober since I started using anything, like since I was 10. And, um, but it's just the grief, like with Tyler, like all the other stuff, all the other trauma in my life, I could work through, I could get over, I could process, but like just losing him and knowing that it was because of my addiction and my failure to work on my own issues and that directly affected him to make the decision that he did to try them and ultimately die because of them. And people always say, don't blame yourself, it's not your fault, blah, 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 but like, I know I didn't kill him. I know I didn't try to, but I was a part of that, you know. Uh, we were in each other's lives, we influenced each other, like, and I have to live with that. Like, every day in my life, I have to live with that. So all I can do now is just do better for him, for myself, because that's what he would want, you know. He would want me to get happy and healthy and sober and continue on with my life as much as I don't want to sometimes, you know. I don't really have a choice, <laughs> so. But I know that's what he would have wanted, and just to have to do it without him, though, it hurts. It's, uh, it was his first time smoking and his last time do you think he got like a hot pill the, a pill that's that's a, has a strength of 20 pills that was just too much for him um on his death certificate because they were my pills that i was doing but at that point in my addiction i was probably doing about like 100 200 pills a day and i was snorting them so i don't i don't know if he smoked it snorted it whatever because i wasn't there but at the time i uh, was snorting them so i'm assuming he did the same and um, on the, de the death certificate, though, it said it was a mixture of fentanyl and cocaine. So I'm assuming that that's what the pill was pressed with. Because it can't just be fentanyl, you know. Otherwise, it'd be like Fetty powder, you know, it'd be extremely potent. But just the fact that he himself had never done the drug before and it wasn't in his system, like it wasn't mine. I had grown a tolerance. And to me, that was nothing. Like the amount that he took for me was probably about like four or five pills tops. Because I had cut them into half pieces. And, um, but to him, even like one pill or two or whatever, however many he did of them, all of them, he, his body wouldn't be able to handle it. And he died. It was too much for his body to handle. If you had never used blues, what would your life look like right now? What would you be doing? I would like to think that he could still be alive and we'd be living together and maybe be starting a family. <laughs> but I don't have that option now. He doesn't have that option now. He doesn't even have a life. He doesn't have any options, you know? So, that's what I'm saying, like, it ruined my life. <laughs> so. That's why you need to get help, right? <laughs> so that you're not next, right? Sometimes I wish I was. But at the same time, like, I know I can't think like that. Because I'm still here. He's not. I have another chance. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people just do it and they're gone. I'm still here and I know it's for a reason. And I know that I need to utilize all the situations, all the pain, all the heartache I've been through. And if I could use that to even reach out and help maybe like one person, like it may not give any reason to the things that have happened in my life or what I've done, but it gives it purpose. So you sharing your story is going to help one person out there. You're going to save somebody's life. If it can. It absolutely will. You know, 13, 14 year old Phoenix that's lost, confused, uh, traumatized at home is going to listen to your story and be like, well, you know what? I'm going to stay away from blues. I'm going to stay from any substance because I want to live. I want my family, my loved ones to live. Right. So uh, thank you for your courage to share your story. Okay. I'm going to give you my card, Phoenix, with my number on it. 
So you can call me if you ever need a right of treatment or somebody to talk to, okay? Thank you. Uh, I'm also going to give you a donated blessing bag <laughs> from one of my subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you open it up real quick to see if those are items you could use? Yeah, of course. Oh, yes, I already see a blanket. I'm, I've been needing one of these. It's been so cold the past week, and everyone keeps stealing my stuff, so... <laughs> Heck yeah, blankie. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's from Shorty, okay? One of my subscribers, a friend of mine, okay? Thank you, Shorty, I appreciate that. Oh, socks, too? Heck yeah, the necessities. <laughs> Little snack bag, heck yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Shorty. <laughs> Thank you. Toiletries, snacks, and also, yeah. also a little card in there, right? Like, is there like a little envelope? Oh, yeah, let me see. Here we go. You are in my thoughts and prayers. You want me to open it? Yeah, please. Oh, okay. Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> let me see. Oh, yeah, quick trip. <laughs> All right, um... Uh, from Shorty. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for accepting this blessing bag. My family and friends helped me make it for you. I only ask that you do me a favor and say a prayer for me as I battle my struggle, struggles with depression, anxiety, and awful thoughts as well. When you can, please pay it forward and bless someone by simply being a friend and helping someone in need. I hope these items help out a little. Be safe and please call Art to go to treatment. We really do care and I'm praying for you. Love, Shorty. Thank you, Shorty. I'll pray for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Phoenix, thank you very much. We're going to all pray for you. Thank you. Stay safe. God bless. And we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you.